In this video, we will talk about bottling honey. We'll show you what tools and equipment we use to bottle honey in our operation, and as well as how to strain the honey to remove any bees knees and wax particles, types of honey jars you can use, how to bottle the honey into jars, and tips for making great honey labels. The things we used to extract honey in this video were extracted honey, a bottling tank with a honey gate, a screen with a spacer, honey containers, labels, and a washcloth. If you don't have the right bottling tools, honey will be, uh, will take an already sticky, messy job and make it even worse. You don't want to pour honey out of a big container into a small container. Uh, it's doable, but it's a lot of trouble. Uh, if you don't have a gate like this, some people will ladle the honey out into smaller jars. That's just a mess. Just, just buy one of these things for 10, 15 bucks and use it. We have a tutorial on how to do this yourself, putting the plumbing, plumbing wire into the bucket. We've got, we've got warm water and a cloth to clean up the drips with. Well, we'll keep that nearby. You might want to use that to keep your fingers, keep the sticky off your fingers, so when you pick up the next jar, you don't get it honey on the outside. There's lots of different ways of uh, straining, filtering. Uh, uh, you can use a paint strainer that fits over a five gallon bucket. You could use cheesecloth. I don't recommend it. It's harder, but it works. You can just let it settle. Uh, so this type of uh, uh, sieve that fits over the the rim of a uh, five gallon bucket is really really a handy way to do it. These are kind of expensive but they'll last a long time. As a note this item pictured is a honey filter. It's very different from the screen that we're using on our honey because it filters particles that are you know microns big. Homemade a uh, spacer. I've taken a lid off of a bucket and I cut a hole in it. And then I took another uh, bucket, or the same one anyway, and I cut it down so it's short. So now I've got some distance between the top of my bucket and the bottom of my straining screen. So now I can set that on here. I can put this on my bottling bucket and I can still fill the bucket all the way up to the top. Here's another example of a homemade spacer made out of a five gallon bucket. It sits on top of the bottom five gallon bucket and holds the screen above out of the honey in the bucket below. This is another example where we cut a hole in the lid of a five gallon bucket and then cut out the bottom of that same bucket and used the lid to hold it up as another kind of spacer. The next step is putting in a container they used to put honey in old uh, metal cans. That's uh, We found that's not the best uh, place for it. We've got plastic and glass or, or ceramic would be the best. A popular size for a uh, pail of honey is a five pound jar, plastic with the, uh, the press on seal type lid. We bottle it in gallons is a popular size. Five gallon buckets of honey is a bit heavy for some people to lift. Uh, you don't want to drop it. Um, so typically we'll sell it in four gallons, quart jars, those are three pounds, uh, pints and half pints, and then we also have the standard squeeze bear, and uh, also mouth jars are really popular right now. That's a retro type of uh, glass with a cork in it instead of a screw-on cap, and that was developed by Mr. Mouth. He has the distinction of developing a container for honey exclusively for honey way back in 1850 something. So mouth jars are making a comeback. Uh, they're real popular for gifts at the farmers markets and boutiques. We have uh, got a bottling tank here that will keep the honey warm. It won't, it won't really heat it, it just keeps it warm. So now we'll strain the honey, get all the little pieces of wax and the bees knees out of it and we'll be ready to bottle. So this tank, you it's, extracted it and just put it right in there without straining? Without straining it, yes. So there's still a little bit of wax. So most of the wax 
in there settled out. It came up to the top. So this honey to start with was fairly clean, but I want to make sure we got all the bees knees out of the honey before we make it available for purchase for our customers. Uh, a five gallon bucket at, at this temperature, it's mid nineties is what that temperature would be at. The thermostat in that heating tank won't go up above a hundred. So, and in a cold room, it's going to be in the mid nineties and it'll take, uh, It'll take five minutes for it to drain out and run through the sieve. Does it ever overflow the screen? So well, we're just going to wait here, even though we could, we could go do something else for a few minutes. The honey company policy is we don't leave the room when the honey gate's open. Yep. Why? <laughs> <laughs> There's uh, some details. Um, and the videos are instructional videos on beekeeping that just don't need to be explained. <laughs> so what do you do when you have a honey spill? Uh, so that gets scraped up off the floor. Don't throw it away. It's good bee food, right? It never end up in a jar that would be sold for consumption, right? But it's still perfectly fine to feed back to the bees. I don't know what's on your floor. It depends on where you're extracting. I guess I shouldn't say that. There might be motor oil. There could be, uh, there could be floor... Floor soap from, there could be a who knows what's on the floor, but if the honey hits the floor and it was a reasonably clean floor, just uh, feed it back to the bees. So the reason we don't leave the room while the honey gate's open is our seaweed floor. If that flowed over, we've got enough space to accommodate the honey from this tank into this tank, so it's not going to end up on the floor, but it might flow over the sieve and then it's not strained. So I want to watch this carefully so it doesn't, uh, doesn't go over the screen. So when the screen gets clogged with small pieces of wax, I'll just take a spatula. Don't take anything sharp. Make sure it's not sharp. It's got to have a nice smooth edge to it. And then you can screen, you can uh, scrape it along the bottom there and that'll get the honey flowing through it better. If the screen gets clogged up while you're trying to, to bottle it, I'll use something uh, that's not sharp, uh, rounded type of spatula, and you can run it down along the screen inside here and scrape off the wax that gets stuck. You can see there the small little pieces of wax that clog up the screen. When honey is warmed up, uh, it'll get a foam on top of it. It's small, tiny bubbles, and it, you can't really uh, liquefy it. Heat will do it. It's almost like creamed honey. Uh, that makes good bee feed. Feed that back to the bees. They'll, uh, they'll fix that problem. But when you're bottling honey, uh, there's lots of flies, ants, wasps, uh, and honey so, bees. And honeybees. So occasionally you're gonna gonna have to fish an insect out of the honey jar. That's just the way it goes. That's the nature of the beast. You'll get uh, that in this case a wasp, but you'll get honey bees that want their honey back. We'll try to uh, find a bee tight place to extract in. First thing to remember is we put all of the honey on the inside of the container, none of it on the outside of the container. All right, to do that, we've got a special bottling gate. This is just a five gallon bucket that everybody has. You can purchase from Bee Supplies these gates. And they have a little wing nut here and an O-ring in there. So if you're careful about how you do this, all right, hold it up close to the gate first and then set it on your table or bench and then watch carefully as the honey comes up. Close the gate slowly when you get near the top. These glass jars, uh, these, this is a mason jar. Whoops, okay, so uh, I've already made a mistake. I've got, I've got honey dripping out the side. Okay, well, sorry, uh, here we go. We got all the, 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 uh, the mistakes of bottling honey already. So. The problem is, is the this screw on this gate is a little bit too loose. We want it to slice the honey off nice and cleanly so it doesn't run out the sides and over the edge and, and like this when we're bottling. This honey's uh, warm right now too, so it's coming out a little bit quicker. So I need to take a screwdriver 
tighten this gate up a little bit. Let's try again. I've adjusted my gate here a little bit so it's not going to leak around the sides. Depending on the size and how fast the honey's flowing, you can just hold it, all right? And then the drip is going to get caught into the jar below it when I'm done. All right, I'm let it sit there for a minute until the stream breaks and then move it out of the way and then let the rest drip into the jar below. Repeat. Wait until it drips. All right, now I got the, got the jar underneath. Too fast. With your bottle, tip on bottle and mason jars, don't go all the way to the, the top, clear full, because when that heats up at the farmer's market in the sun on a hot Saturday afternoon, it'll expand a little bit, and even though you've got a nice seal on the ring on your jar, it can still leak. So don't put it quite all the way to the top. So on a quart jar, a mason quart jar, it's hard to get three pounds in that jar unless you fill it up as full as you can get it. You don't want it to the very, very top or it could leak out, but you get it as full as you can with a mason jar for three pounds. So I'll cut the gate down slowly before I get to the top. you got to anticipate how much volume is still in the stream of honey before you get there. And you cut it off with a little practice. You'll get it just right. We did it. All the honey's in the jar. None of the honey on the outside of the jar. That makes it easier to put the label on. <laughs> Glass uh, is a, a nice container for honey. That way people who are extra sensitive to uh, uh, what's in their food or what their food is, is packaged in can feel safe about having natural uh, honey with no impurities in it. So what I've done, I bought these uh, and I left the wrapper on there. I cut it out. So now I can put the honey back in and I've got uh, my nicely contained, mostly unspillable case of honey ready to go. Quite often we get people to want to buy a whole case at the farmer's market. So I just leave the wrapper on the case there. So when it comes time to label your honey, you might want to check with your local laws the USDA has requirements, and then you might have some more requirements locally in your state. I don't know for sure, but you, I know they want you to have all your contact information on. Uh, also on honey labels, it'll be required to say what's in the container. It's got to be listed as honey and the weight. That's uh, something you need also so the customer will know how much they're paying for honey by the pound or the ounce or whatever. I uh, remember uh, being at a farmer's market one time and the beekeeper there didn't have any label on his honey. So that's, uh, that's a bit of a problem in many ways. One, people won't know how to find him again when they, when they want to buy more honey. Plus, how do you know it's really honey? Well, it might be honey colored, but we don't know what's in the jar if there's no label. Put some fancy artwork on your label. It's kind of fun to work out a, a unique label to your own honey company if you're going to sell it. This is an original watercolor painting by Stan. If you'd like a PDF copy of this to frame and hang in your home, then visit our website and we have some available for sale. This is the third in our three part of harvesting extracting and bottling honey. Thanks for watching us. I uh, hope you uh, get a good harvest and uh, have a good, good sales at the uh, farmer's market. If you liked this video, be sure to check out our beekeeping courses at thehoneycompany.com. We're offering six full-length beekeeping courses for beginning, intermediate, and advanced beekeepers. See you there!